Live from Boston, Massachusetts, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering HP Big Data Conference 2015, brought to you by HP Software. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in Boston, Massachusetts for HP Big Data Commerce special presentation of SiliconANGLE's The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal the noise. I'm John Furrier, SiliconANGLE. My co-host Dave Vellante with Wikibon.com. Our next guest is Bill Tysinger, VP of Engineering at YellowPages.com. Welcome to The Cube. Thank you. So, VP of Engineering, YellowPages.com, must have a ton of data. I mean, huge big data. Tell us, give us a little bit of background on how big the data is, what's the engineering culture look like? Sure, so, you know, uh, you know yellowpages.com, yp.com, uh, is a local marketing solutions provider. We're based in Los Angeles. Um, so right now, you know, we, we are helping small businesses uh, and consumers kind of get together. Uh, we have about half a million uh, small businesses as advertisers with YP, and um, across about 20 million business listings in 4,600 categories, so that does generate a good amount of data. We capture about three billion events a day, and and process it in our uh, infrastructure. All right, so take us through what, what a day in the life of, or a month, or a week, or a life cycle. A lot of ingestion. Yes. Big, you're data full. Got a lot yes. of data you're going through. Take us through some of the core problem areas, opportunities where you guys are kicking butt. What's going on? Sure, well we, we have a lot of integration, of yeah. course. Uh, we integrate with about 50 different data sources, both yp.com, all the YP native apps, and through our partner network. So we partner with Yahoo and Bing and others. Uh, we capture a lot of that data, so clicks, impressions, searches, traffic, and click stream data. But we also capture data from our native internal applications, so uh, business applications, back office systems, things of that nature. And we have to integrate all that data so we can tell a complete story about our advertisers, about our consumers, and also about the behavior internally within YP. So you have data pipes into all those networks, so for instance, Yahoo and Bing. Yes. You're connected, are they co-locating data dumps over there, or is it direct feeds coming back and forth? No, we, we're, we have a data collection framework that actually will capture searches and clicks and impressions from their systems, right, and their mm -hmm. platforms, and they'll cap we'll capture them in our network and process them. Got it, so, so you're getting all that clickstream data. Yep. Okay, so what's exactly. the biggest challenge that you have? And what's the, if you had to boil it up, top three, uh, as in from an engineering and to, to sure. business, how do you tie it all together? Um, the biggest challenge we have right now is, you know, we have roughly four or five petabytes of data that, that is sitting there. We're processing it, we do a really good job of processing it, we do a really good job of collecting it. We're doing a very poor job of being able to get that information to analysts and product managers. And, and people within the company. So we are continually looking for tools that help us yeah. do that. Yeah, because you got a huge ingestion. Yes. So you're storing the big piles. We got we got the it's data. Just, it's like stored right, it away. We've, ma we've mastered that. We've gotten pretty tight SLAs, we've mastered that. We have a pretty pretty sound infrastructure, we've mastered that. Now we really need to master the information piece of this. How do we get that data to the analyst, to the product owner uh, in the company, to the data scientist? So that's the next level of that's the next level of innovation you guys are going to. Yes. Working absolutely. on data, low latency, search, yep. <laughs> yes. all the hard stuff. All the hard stuff. <laughs> it's really hard. It is hard. Explain but how why it's hard. A lot of folks go, oh, it's just, I got the pile of data and all the thing prepared. Why is it so hard? Nothing looks the same, right? We always say unstructured. And you can capture unstructured data, but at some point there needs to be structure to data. Otherwise you can't really analyze it and report on it. So that's a challenge in and of itself. How do you do that, right? Um, we have a lot of systems we integrate that are unstructured when initially, and then we have to turn structured into them. A good example is that something like Salesforce.com. We use Salesforce in our company, and we integrate Salesforce with, through HBase using their APIs to load data, right? But that HBase data, unstructured, yeah. needs to turn to structure at some point and be able to provide reporting to people. And that's a challenge when you, do, you take that one unique use case and then spread it across 70 different use cases. All of a sudden, yeah. you're really, you know, trying to deal with things at scale, and there's a lot oh, of variety and HBase in that itself is a moving train, because you got to write your own libraries, a lot yes. of custom stuff going on. Yes, HBase But once is. you master it, it's <laughs> so awesome. Never say master, <laughs> never say master. <laughs> so, how, how, yeah. how long you been with the company? I've been with YP since 2010. I, I, prior to that, I owned a consulting company, and, I was, and YP was a customer of, of mine, and uh, I ended up taking a full-time gig there, so I can get a lot of hands-on ex experience with you know, big data in the, in the platforms that are there. So I've been there about five years now. Okay, but so you know, obviously know a lot about the history of the company as well. Yes. I mean, here's a, here's a long time company that has to totally transform. I mean, it yes. went from sort of being a dead tree company to an online yeah. you know, marketing powerhouse. It, it's, so it has absolutely. What, can you talk that about that path. transformation? I mean, sure. culturally, you guys 
must talk about it all the time. I mean, it's yes, you it's, know, I mean, um, Yellow Pages started in the eighteen hundreds. Yeah, so. it, that's I was just <laughs> mentioning a minute ago. It's been you know, over a hundred years. Like, you know, it's phone books. We just recently spun off the, the you know, story, business, right? They so. ran out of yellow, the, the white paper, right? And they, they <laughs> yellow paper. That's how the yellow pages started. No more paper. <laughs> um, and so the, the, my boss, the CTO, Darren Clark, has done a really good job of building a very strong core technology team in Glendale. There's about 350 engineers there. A lot of them have really solid backgrounds from Yahoo and, and other uh, strong tech companies. Uh, we've built our own insert, internal search systems. We've built our own data platforms. So it's a very good core engineering team that's, that's there. So now the focus has been, how do we transform what looks like a print business into what really is a digital business? And we've been going through that exercise for the last three years. And um, it's been a, it's a challenge, an opportunity. It's been a lot of fun. And so when you have little successes, um, that breeds culture. Like I think success breeds culture. So when you build systems and tools and you can see them actually impacting the marketplace and helping consumers and helping businesses, then you start to get something out of that. And that's, how, that's really all the engineers want. They want to see and well, build and something that people use and find useful and helps them, right? And you're a lot of your customers and partners are also yeah. large scale, Yahoo, Bing. I mean, they're they not are. screwing around either. You get massive petabytes, you know, they Tons have, of data. They have a lot of data as so well. I used to work at Yahoo back in the day before I left there in 2005, and then went back to working at Idea Lab, uh, Bill Gross's uh, yeah. company, and uh, was there for about a year before I started my own consulting business, and then went to YP, which was at the time AT&T Interactive. So we were yeah. owned 100% by AT&T, and in 2012, AT&T divested 53% to Cerberus Capital Management out of New York, and then AT&T does own 47% of us, so we have, we serve two masters. So. Yeah. When thinking about that digital transformation, I mean, you, the conversation must have started with, all right, what are our assets, you know, and how do we transform those into a into a digital world? So you obviously got the data. Yep, about we have the data. Everything and everybody, businesses, people. Right. Uh, and, and then you got advertisers, and we have yep. relationships with yep. them. Absolutely. You've always been about putting those together, but how did you sort of transform that model into the digital world? What, is it, what does it look like today, and how have you enhanced it to take advantage of, of digital? Yeah, it's kind of voice of the customer in a lot of ways. So what's out there in the marketplace? What do, what do small businesses really need help with? Sometimes it's presence management, which is something we've been developing in-house and we offer as a, as a product. Sometimes it's search engine marketing. We offer that as a product through YP Search. So we try to really encompass like the whole landscape, right? We want to be the solution provider. So as a small business, you may need direct mail. You may need print for that matter. Some small businesses do really want print as a, as a medium uh, sure. for getting, getting uh, consumers. You may want search engine marketing, you may want presence. We want to bundle all those tools together so that as a small business, you have one voice, one expert. You can go to that expert and we can then help you, right, solve for all these problems. So, describe your sort of data architecture and how that's evolved. I presume you had a traditional, maybe still have, a traditional EDW. Yeah. Um, is that, you know, using Hadoop, uh, what we are you are. doing? Are you doing ETL offloads from that EDW? Sure. Are you replacing that? Where does, are you using Vertica, where does that fit in? Just paint a picture for us. Absolutely. Um, so when I arrived, there was a lot of SQL Server in-house. A lot of events were getting dropped on the floor. SLAs were a mess, right? So the, the, the common mindset at the time, this is 2009, 10, was, hey, there's this Hadoop thing out there, let's try that, okay? So, so we stepped in, my company stepped in, and we built a Hadoop infrastructure to process the data. Um, and got that up and running, got it reliable, and, um, and then started looking at the warehousing platform, and that's where Vertica comes in. So right now what we do is we do a lot of data collection, we process everything in our Hadoop environment, uh, we store it there, expose it through tools like Hive, um, and then push that data into Vertica for ultimately for reporting on platforms or just for analysts to go there and write their own queries and, and get their own data. And so that kind of lends itself to a big challenge. How do we expose the data that's now that's in the Hadoop into something that analysts can use? So prior to Hadoop, when you had conversations with practitioners, they, they kind of went about data warehouse, they kind of went something like this, which we're constantly evolving our data warehouse, we can't keep up. I always say it's a snake swallowing a basketball. <laughs> Every time Intel one. comes out with a new microprocessor, we try to you know, make our stuff go faster and throw hardware at the problem. Right. It's just this never ending battle. Um, I presume you kind of you know that story well, and so yes. and Hadoop comes in and you say, okay, now we have this inexpensive sort of filtering system. Oh, I wouldn't call it that. Okay, so that's, <laughs> that's what I get to. I wouldn't so, call it inexpensive. Well, at first it sort of looked alluring, right? And yes. then what happens is you're going to get sucked into the vortex of open source, and absolutely, all of a sudden you got this other 
tiger right. by the tail. Open source does so, not mean openness. So, right? so, <laughs> so describe yeah. how that affected sort of the economics of data sure. and sort of the processes and, and what does that mean for your your strategy going forward? Well, you know, it became really apparent immediately, first and foremost, you had to build a very, very strong technical team, right? From platform engineers to ops people, from DevOps, you, know, you had to have the whole gamut of people. So you're really trading what, would, what at the time would have been a cost in software and licensing mm -hmm. with something that's proprietary with a cost and trade-off of people, which is fine if you can get them. Right, so that was one of the challenges you have to, you have to walk into that knowing I need a core solid team to be able to use this infrastructure. Um, now when there's so many tools out there, you have Spark, you have Impala, you have SQL and Hadoop, you have MapReduce, these machines aren't cheap anymore, right? They're all requiring a lot of resources to run. Everybody in the company wants to use their tool of choice, which means you have to support it, which means you've kind of moved into a space which is a little bit more of an investment now. You're buying machines that are $15,000, not $8,000. And so when you do that across a large bed of data and machines, then it becomes a, a, a fiscal conversation at that and point. And you're buying support subscriptions, or they're buying, man, buying you know, management frameworks, or yeah, you, going up the there's, stack. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of tools out there you need to help manage it. Absolutely. So what'd you make of, I don't know if you saw the keynotes this week. Yes. Um, Love Michael Stonebreaker. So, so, okay, so I was ask <laughs> he was you, so, slinging it, wasn't he? So Stonebreaker, he, 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 I, we he, love him too. He came in the cube a couple times. He's been in the cube. Yeah, he, he laid just, it out. He, he puts it right up there. It. But one of the things he said is, all this big data stuff. It's all a bunch of BS. You know, Hadoop this, Hadoop that. It's all about the data warehouse. Now, yeah. now I as mean, a practitioner, you've yeah. added some value with Hadoop. So, what'd you make of that? And you help know, us parse it, through that. There is value there in that it, what was once not feasible for a lot of companies, not the Googles of the world of the Yahoo, but smaller businesses like ourselves that have a big data problem in some shape or form, what wasn't feasible at the time is feasible through using Hadoop. But it poses a challenge now. You need yeah. you don't just need data, you need information and insights. This engineering is really yes. This, I mean absolutely. you can store everything into Hadoop, it's a great pile. You can yeah. store it. All that ingest, yes, great. Right? That, that's a, that and then when you really want to act on it, you, you, you got to engineer the hell out of it, right? right. I mean, and take I, us through and, that. And I think that that's what we're seeing with the tools that are evolving, right? So, and then to his point, like every every year a new tool comes out, right? And people are adopting it because it does add some value. And then another tool comes out, and then another tool comes out. So where is the real value? And that's kind of hard to, to okay. kind of sift through all the noise to find to find what is really valuable in terms of tools that you can then want to put out there. There's so many, I could spend my entire team's time evaluating tools uh, or yeah. flavors of the day. And there's also and the so Lego block op opportunity where you, why yeah. build when, why buy when you could, or why build when you could buy? <laughs> yeah. How the expression goes. Oh, it's very so true. Everyone's got, how many streaming engines are out there right now? I mean, why Absolutely. build one? So yeah. Kafka, all these things are talking about. So I got to answer the question, you just teed up a good, good question. There's a ton of noise out there, everywhere. So one of the things we get all the time from our cube audience is, hey, just bottom line me, is Hadoop dead? And is it Spark is the answer? So a lot of Hadoop Spark going on FUD. Spark's hyped up right now. You know, you know, we know why. We see people using that. Okay, in memory, I get that. Right. I, that's cool. Hadoop is great. It means not, I mean, it doesn't seem to be going away. I we were saying they're not mutually exclusive. Right. But what's your take? I mean, Hadoop has been useful for you guys. Absolutely been right? useful. So My take is always pick the right tool for the job. And sometimes that's going to lead you towards something like Hadoop, sometimes sparks the job. Now, my environment is a production environment. I don't have the, the true option of trying to beta test something in my production environment. Hadoop, may, I wouldn't necessarily call it dead, but it's definitely mature. And sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes it can be a bad thing. Sometimes it's a good thing. We don't really want to rely on a lot of map. Well, is it jobs, relevant or irrelevant? I think it's relevant depending upon your use case. Yeah, I think yeah. it's relevant depending upon your use case. We are probably going to end up migrating off of using MapReduce jobs sometime in the near future. Um, I have a, uh, I, I love using Vertica. I think it's a very powerful database platform. Um, I like relying on it for yeah. things. We've just completed a beta testing of Vertica SQL on Hadoop. We're still going through that process, but it shows very, very, very good performance, and it's very promising as a tool that'll allow me get past that one hurdle, which Again, is how do it's people SQL get data on Hadoop. Out of that? It's not killing Hadoop; it's just making Hadoop more accessible. Right. I mean, SQL. I mean, SQL, SQL. Right. So I, I mean, people yeah, know SQL. Absolutely. But then you start thinking about all I'm using Hadoop for is HDFS at that point. Yeah. So, That's what Stonebreaker was saying. Exactly, <laughs> and, he's, and he's right, right? Yeah. So, and, and, and Spark may be a good option for some folks, depending upon yeah. what they want to do. 
Um, I'm going to I'm going to continue to put my resources and effort around SQL and Hadoop, the Vertica SQL and Hadoop, to see what it can do for for us because yeah. I think it's going to. You be don't have the powerful. luxury. You have production. You have large yeah. scale. I mean, you don't have time to screw around. You got to get the job no. done. Yes, I absolutely. I mean, you have SLAs, you got data, and it's active data, so interesting. Yes. Okay, so what's the biggest surprise in the industry? Let's take a step back, a lot of noise out there. Where's the signal, and what's surprising you, what's not surprising you, uh, what's going on in today's world? Um, From a practitioner standpoint, what's <laughs> real? In terms of what's real, in terms of what's meat on the bone? What surprises me is that there's not a lot, I mean, it seems like there's a lot of BI and reporting vendors out there, but it, to me, it doesn't seem like there's a lot. Right, so I, I have three different reporting solutions in my environment, right, which seems kind of odd. Right? So we use Tableau for discovery and visualization. Right? We're using information builders for enterprise reporting. Right? We're using Vertica SQL and Hadoop for some things. We have R over here, we have SAS over there. It just doesn't seem like there's a lot of innovation in that area sometimes to take advantage of stuff. So that seems a little surprising to me. There's a little bit of innovation, but not as much as there are in other areas like streaming and SQL process and SQL streaming and, and Kafka and messaging and those seem, those things seem to be where people are focusing a lot of their time and attention. So. Do you think it's just an evolution, it's the progression of the market right now? Because there's a ton of, I mean here at this conference, there's a lot of engineering going on. When I say engineer, I don't mean development, I mean right. that's engineering is development. You can say it's not just it's not a developer conference. Right. It's not like hey we're we're banging out some new code, it's not right. a software thing, it's really the bigger software and engineering. So is this a, just a case of ev, you know, market evolution? Just I, 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 yeah, I really think it is. I mean, we, we're only 20, 30 years from what people would have considered to be traditional warehousing practices and principles. You know, Inman, Kimball, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I mean, and so we're not far removed from yeah. that. Some people can't really get their head around the fact that warehouses look different today. What is a data warehouse? Is it a, a single software platform? Is it the whole kit and caboodle? Yeah. Like I tend to look at it as the whole kit and caboodle. Yeah, because you should be able to get data insights anywhere along the chain. So it's interesting, it's you know, changed. Dave and I were talking on theCUBE a couple, couple of events ago. It's like a lot of guys who are selling the products, the suppliers to people in the field, customers, yeah. they don't have a data problem. Their data, they provide the scaffolding and the, and the, you know, the apparatus of software, but they're right. actually not living the data problem. That's true. So, I got to ask you the question, it's kind of, maybe kind of out there, but <laughs> as people get data full, I mean, you're an example of, you're already, you're living data in the Genome Center in New York, they, uh, oh, they got data impressive. coming out their ears, yeah. right? So, this is an example of data full. They have data problems today. Right. Large scale guys like Yahoo, you've been there, you know, the, all those web guys at Gen 1, they had data problems, they built their own solutions. Yep. But now as the enterprises start to become data full, right. what advice do you give those guys? Because that's it's new territory for them. I mean, you've been living in it. You've been, you've been that, in, that, yes. in that Whitewater Rapids for like multiple years. I mean, so right. you know that. So what's your advice to those guys? What should they expect? They, you know, it's also some of the challenges that most companies have. So, you know, you have, you have challenges in the expertise it takes to be able to handle all the Vs of, of big data, right? But then you have these challenges now on the other end of the stick. The, the product managers, the analysts who need to think in terms of data. And sometimes that can be a little bit of a challenge. And, and giving them the tools they need to be able to do that is a little bit of a challenge. So I would say be mindful of the fact it's an enterprise change. It's not a big data platform team that's going to come in and make things yeah, new happen. A BI tool that does yeah, magic. Yeah, the BI tool's not going to make it yeah. happen. It's a complete enterprise and cultural change. Right, the whole enterprise has to think data and be data driven. If only a part of it doesn't do that, the thing kind of collapses, and it doesn't work out as well. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks so much, Bill, for coming on theCUBE. Thanks for sharing your insights. Thank you. Obviously, you're it. a veteran in the business and both large scale. I mean, I guess you were doing DevOps before DevOps was called DevOps. <laughs> you know, because you had no choice. I love DevOps. <laughs> we do <laughs> too. My favorite thing in the world. <laughs> Honestly. Um, yeah. No, we we can get, definitely <laughs> have you on as a guest host, a guest host on our next segment. So again. We, did, we think DevOps is powering analytics. Absolutely. No brainer. Yeah. Um, and again, data full, this is the new concept. So, this is theCUBE bringing you more data live here in Boston at HP's Big Data Event, special presentation of theCUBE. We'll be back at this short break.